pull up some slides. Let's talk about the week. Um, there wasn't much of a week, honestly, mm-hmm. but make it all make sense. Let's move to ahead to the to the next slide. I'm just going to throw out some stuff. Make it all make sense to me. Spooz is in danger of closing below 4,100 for the first time in three weeks. Um, these were the only things that really moved the market this week. That's why we, we're. I mean, more normally, I, but the one thing you can see is CPI starting to mute, and we've noticed that the previous time. We've noticed this again. We did have a big down move, but then the market just bought them up. Same thing yesterday with this PPI, and they both came in a little bit higher. So the biggest thing that happened, though, uh, Fed funds rates uh, have changed dramatically in the past couple of weeks. Uh, well, in the past seven to 10 days, because of CPI and PPI for the May meeting and June meetings. For a while, it seemed like we weren't going to have any more rate hikes after March. But now it's starting to look like maybe we will. So this whole higher for longer thing and how much is this going to affect tech stocks and stocks overall, we'll have to wait and see. Bitcoin was probably one of the few positive things yesterday. Crossed 25K for the first time since June, since that Terra uh, USD, whatever it was. I don't even remember the name of it. Who cares? But uh, it was a, one of the collapses that caused a little bit of lack of confidence in Bitcoin. 25K, I think, if, if, it, if it gets back up there and holds above that, you start to create a little bit more confidence once again. Two and 10-year yields both climb above 10 basis points this week. So it's interesting. And this is where the whole make it all make sense comes from. These yields are ripping for the most part throughout the week, yet stocks weren't really tanking. I was talking about this not only on my show, an engineer in trade. I was talking about it with uh, Vecchio on Futures Power Hour. We we're trying to figure it out. Can you guys, you guys got any insight? Like, what's up with that? Yields rising has been the biggest detriment to the market for the most part. But this week didn't seem to care too much until yesterday when Tom so correctly predicted that they were just really going to lose it here in the market. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your question? What, I don't get the question. Two years and 10 years. They rose all week. And yet the markets were actually up throughout the week until yesterday. So what was yeah. up? With them? I mean, eventually we didn't have down days. Well, first of all, that correlation hasn't been there for quite some time. You know, like we haven't really been trading with an inverse correlation at all. And the other thing is, you know, you're right. I mean, the market just, basically laughed at the twos and tens yields going higher. Um, the 30s, the same thing. I mean, this was a, si- since the since the first like two weeks or three weeks of the year, bonds have been in a little bit of a free fall, 132 to 124. It's a big move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been weird, man. Couldn't figure it out. And then uh, volatility. I mean, you know, I, it, I feel like VIX is the average might be 20 now. It used to be 19, but it's sitting around that. I'm going to start calling 20 average and VVIX. Uh, but both of these were, were down week over week. So, uh, again, yields going up. Didn't spook the market. Volatility kind of sat where it is. Again, we'll see what happens today. Let's move into the next slide. This is the, the chart, CPI. Uh, I mean, when January of 2021 was 1.4% under that 2% that uh, the Fed wants ripped, of course, uh, the high came in June of last year. But now we've seen, uh, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight months of uh, decrease in inflation. Might be a while before we get down to 2%, but it seems to be heading in the right direction. I think that's the real take home story here. So whether this creates the runway to markets to go higher, We'll see. I mean, theoretically, it should. This is coming down. But, of course, you got to trade what you see, not necessarily what you think is going to happen. Let's move ahead to the next slide. Man, um, what can you say, dude? Uh, twos and tens. It just continues to remain inverted. And uh, what, what are you, you going to do? You got you to gotta scalp this thing, right, if you're trading it. it. Do you hold? Do you scalp? Do you find different ways to offset? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you... I don't think you can. Um, I don't think you can scalp it. I think you have to just. I, I think it's such a hard scalp, man. I mean, this week you could scalp a little bit because it's been up and down, but at this point, I think you close your eyes. Like I, that's what I'm doing. I'm long it. I'm playing for a steepener down here. You have to, and oh, you don't have to, but that's how I'm playing it. And you just hope you hope you get lucky. Has, has closing your eyes always been a trading strategy for you, uh, me lord? Well, I, I I alternate between closing my eyes and black tape. <laughs> <laughs> black tape is another strategy that that has a you know never failed, failed you. I mean, you know, screens are cheaper now, so you can you know if you have to put a golf club through a screen, you can do that too. But 
back in the day they were expensive so we had to learn to use black tape and we would we would also tape like different kinds of paper over a screen yeah all the above what about the old uh, move it into a different account that was what i what i experienced a lot <laughs> you can just move into a different account that you don't have to look at every day that was another strategy but but that strategy takes a lot of you know the the, the firms get hip to that pretty quick like they figure that out <laughs> yeah we it's pulled that chat. off we pulled that off for a number of years but then they caught us <laughs> let's move ahead to the next slide so you were talking about, like you said, uh, ten-year yield and spoos. It's been a positive correlation, and we need this thing to flip for for any sign of a normal market. And it's been heading in the down direction, but we need this thing to go negative. Uh, this relationship between ten-year ten-year bonds. Sorry, I said yields probably ten-year bonds and and spoos. We need this thing to go negative for to get to any semblance of a normal market. I think we'll see. Let's move ahead to the next slide. This has been an interesting one. Divergence between USO and XLE. So basically oil prices and um, energy stocks and whatnot, right? Oil's kind of been sitting in this same range for a while. And USO has, of course, you know, since it's because of the way it works and oil market is kind of in contango a little bit, uh, oil price, oil, USO has dropped to some degree. But XLE, we've seen. You know, I think this thing is largely dominated by Exxon and Chevron, and there's been this divergence there. I'm not necessarily sure if it's anything to take advantage of, but um, it's just an interesting look at how USO works, right, overall, because it uses futures for oil, and then how energy shares have really been trading. Most most energy stocks have been up, for the most part, even after earnings, since they did had some pretty good quarters. You notice this? Yeah. Yeah, I did not notice that. I, yeah. I haven't traded USO that much because the IV rank got really cheap. So I hadn't traded it recently, but I didn't. I actually didn't know that that divergence was in play. I really didn't know. Yeah, me neither. It's something I didn't. I kind of didn't notice at all. Matter of fact, I didn't realize USO was trading 68. For some reason, I still have it as like a $40 ETF in my head. I don't know. So, yeah, this is an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. We'll head to the last slide. What's up with SPX, man? We got UK stocks, France stocks hitting highs. We got it. We got well, what's going on. I thought they were in bigger trouble than we were rates wise, but yet they're hitting all time highs. I shouldn't say they. We 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 are hitting all time highs. We can partake in in that FTSE 100 too because we're 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 a company from out of there. But it's interesting to watch these guys hit all time highs while we're still kind of struggling. Um. One interesting note this week was uh, Citadel taking a stake in that Silvergate Bank. SI is one of those crypto stocks, and this stock kind of took off throughout the week, um, not only on that day, but also when Bitcoin hit 25K yesterday. Most of those stocks really ripped Coin, Silvergate, MicroStrategies, and then they all ended up fading. Um, I ended up putting on, I think I put on a, oh, I put on an Iron Condor and, and um, Coin yesterday 61 vol i think it was 61 ivr figured why not retail I mean, sales comes. No, hold on one second i mean silvergate was a 120 dollar stock less than a year ago right maybe a little maybe even a little bit more i mean i think it traded up to like a 160 it's it's 18 dollars. i mean can it just be a value play like you know like i mean like can it i think just, it is i think right? it is. i mean you know okay okay but i think it's funny like nobody care like everybody cares when citadel does something but like you don't hear anybody complaining here. Like, I mean, they want to take a 5% stake in Silver Lake. All right, Silver Bay. Sure, go ahead. Have a party. Yeah. It's probably it's probably a great buy. You know, they're probably, they're, like you said, they're probably buying something super cheap. Yeah, so I think that's exactly what it was. And you could probably buy it as low as they bought, or if not lower, uh, today. It's back to $18.20. And, and I think it's only got as low as, as $12, which was back in January. Yeah, what 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 price did they pay? Do you know? I don't even know what price they paid. Well, they probably paid that. You I think it was somewhere around sixteen like, bucks or something like that. Or was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, retail sales jumps the most in two years. So recession fears is it overblown? I mean, people are, seem to still be buying. People are still paying for stuff. Every people have jobs. Is this idea of a recession is it been overblown? It's been blown up too much, right? I think so. And then uh, research. OJ, following vol volatility and volume was the cool one for this week. So check that out, people. That's all I got. Light week. Well, I think it did a good job. 
Uh, Sadnap, um, I've got a couple of your people wrote into me. You played for the Larchmont Huskies. Don't you, don't you deny it? Okay, we're gonna take a quick ninety second break. Oh, oh did, one guy did write in. Brad wrote in and said SPX uh, AM settlement since nineteen ninety two. Ninety two. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know the date. Would you have known the date? No, I had no idea. Since right. 1992. And before before that, I don't think there was a lot, that, you know, like, I, I'm not sure how, how, I'm not sure what they did for settlement before that, but I think before that it was only quarterly. And I'm not even sure if the SPX was that big back then. So I don't know. People forget that that you never had the, the daily, weekly, monthly. It was quarterly, like, you know, yeah. four times a year. Crazy. Oh, yeah, it's the same settlement, right? Yes. No, no, no. OEX was PM settlement. PM. Oh, only? Okay. Yeah. Only yeah. PM settlement. Only PM. Never AM. Yeah. yeah. Let's say a quick that, that if it was AM, Sadloff wouldn't be here today. I mean, he made all his money on expiration. <laughs> fling and fling and fling and going to the elbow all the time. He was amazing. It was did something to watch. You guys didn't sit in the pit the whole expiration. You guys left the pit during expiration, right? No. No. In fact, we had a, there was expiration Friday was when it was quarterly. There was like they were marked on the calendar. Like those were like those were those were dates like that was Christmas. Someday, Jamal, I'll tell you about this Johnny sleeping in the hallway at 5 a.m. waiting for the doors to open. But I'm going to save that for my book. We're going to be back in 90 seconds. We got more tasty live coming back at you. With the I will opening. pay to fund your book. <laughs> Oh, I don't think you will. I know Julia too, okay? <laughs> like nothing, all right? We're going to take a quick 90 second break. Come back. We got more Tasty Live after this. Oh, I got some stories for you, Jamal. <laughs> what a.